What up? Finally, finally, we got another review win instead of the, doing this doing comedy lately. Movie theaters are open, or at least where I'm at. If not at yours, that sucks. But first movie I went to go see was the newest movie that came out, Unhinged. As you see, poster right there. Um, the before I get into talking about that, remember. Okay, so there's gonna be three different. I'm gonna say like three different personalities that I'm be going through. We got the big movie of the week right here. We're gonna have the comedy me, where I fill in the garage, and then we're gonna start doing just horror movies for regular movies. And that'll be a different character. And you're going to see what I'm talking about when it happens. I'm pretty sure you guys will be shocked. Um, that being said, like I said, movie I review is Unhinged. Russell Crowe uh, is pretty much the big name in this movie. The other people, you know, you might have seen him like the, the kid. He was in the new Child's Play movie. Um, Andy, the lawyer, was in like House of Cards. Um, so, I mean, some of these people have been in things, but Russ Crowe is a big name. First of all, I want to say right here, right now, damn, Russ Crowe gained some fucking weight. Like, I'm not a skinny guy, but I'm scared of him now. I think I could play Gladiator faster than he could play Gladiator now. Um, but unhinged. It starts off, <clears throat> like, I, I thought it was going to be, like, a slow build. I mean, when you get, when you get past this party, it, it does have a slow build. But he's in a car. You see him take over his wed wedding ring, which you see in the trailer. Um, so you're like, oh, what's he doing? And he breaks into this fucking house and kills the two people there. I'm assuming one of them was his ex-wife and then her new lover. But then, let me tell you. The thing I liked about this movie, Unhinged, even though it was supposed to come out before now, but with all the shit that's going on, with um, all the riots and people attacking people, this movie was like the perfect movie to start off doing my reviews again, because it, it fits so much into what the, the what's going on in the world right now, which is kind of a messed up thing to say, but it's very fitting. Oh, before I go any further, I'm Phil the Punisher Collins. This is the Oddity Critics. In case you didn't know, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, let's get it let's get into this. So, once he does bash through the door and all that, then you get a title card. And it's pretty much talking about how um, people are fucking insane, pretty much. Like, it's just, you hear, like, a news reporter saying how aggressive people must become, and, um, how they're just attacking people for no reason. Like, all, all this shit. And that's why I feel like it fits into it, because some people, it's unprovoked, um, attacking. Um, not, some of these protests are obviously for a reason, like the Black Lives Matter protest, I ain't this and that, but some of, some of the violence has came through it, and people don't realize one bad thing, or one thing that can happen to you, you don't know where a person's level is, like, they can have a lot of tolerance, or that could be their snapping point, and I was telling my dad that I feel like this movie is the modern day hitcher slash joyride movie, like, that, that. those are the two that it reminds me of, like, it's the modern day and the movie, the thing that I feel like definitely better than uh, this movie is it's only an hour and a half. Yeah, I got my slip my shirt on. But uh, the movie's only an hour and a half long. So, one thing, you know, you, you get your little bit of character development after the, the main credit or the opening title card credits. And you, you establish the mother and son relationship and how she's going through a divorce. And, um... All this, but then it's just like randomly, she hunks at this per uh, at, at this person, Russell Crowe's character, 
and um, he's talking, and he he gives her a chance to apologize for you know, just like ah, ah, and some of you motherfuckers, I know you motherfuckers, are just like this woman, guy or female. I'm not. I'm, but how you're so impatient. Like, don't get me wrong. Where he was at, yes, he probably could have. I mean, the light was green. He could. He should have moved. But maybe he was just looking to pick a fight. I mean, I don't know. But instead of just automatically going around him and making the light, she's she decides to honk at him. He stops next to him and goes, "You didn't even give me a courtesy honk, like doot doot. You know, this this a small little honk, not not like ah ah. You like get the fuck out of my way, kind of honk." Um, but I, I, I can understand that because, you know, some people, as soon as the light turns green, you know, those, like I said, the light was green for a while when she did it. But some of you, as soon as the light turns green and somebody's not moving, you're automatically ah, ah, like, motherfucker, get out of my way. But what it pursues, like, it starts all, you know, and a lot of this stuff is in the trade where. The beginning part is a lot in the trailer. Um, where, like, she goes to the gas station and then she finds, uh, or sees that he's following her and all that. But then he runs over this guy. And let me tell you, I thought, you know, that's where he, like, he was going to run over him, like, tired. No, he lands on top of the hood. And then he gets swung off. Okay? And he lands in the street. And then all of a sudden, this other, other car goes and runs the guy over. It's like, oh, shit. Um,. It was an R-rated movie. Now, did it go over the top? Honestly, it was pretty moderate of how much the violence was. It wasn't crazy violent. Uh, just the right amount for uh, um, what they were going for. Like, nothing crazy or anything like that. But, um, when he's, like, chasing her and he's hitting her in the back bumper and, you know, just chasing her down... Uh, it was pretty intense, like, this whole thing is intense, and then she finds out that her phone's missing, and he has her phone, and he goes to his lawyer. That, see, that, that that is one of the parts I didn't understand. How do you know automatically that that, I mean, he looked around and tried to see, you know, I guess he could have noticed because the guy had a lot, a lot of his paperwork and all that. But besides that, he wouldn't know that this guy was somebody's lawyer. And besides that, it looks like he's waiting for somebody. Um... But the, there was a part where he's like, well, I can't get her on the phone. He goes, well, if I get her on the phone, you owe me a cup of coffee. I'm like, okay. And he goes, well, if you don't, and he goes, then I owe you a cup of coffee. And when they're talking, and he's like, I don't think you know what a bad day is, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what it means to actually be uh, apologetic. And he grabs a coffee cup and smashes it into Andy's face. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, it, it gets... It has very, the the good thing is it has pretty intense moments. Even though you kind of have an idea what's going to happen, it's pretty intense. Yeah. Um, nothing was like oh, I'll, only thing that you didn't know is when he was going to see her and when he was going to show up. Um, you know, sometime you're thinking he's tracking her cell phone that he gave her, the flip phone. But it's not. He's he taped up her um, iPad to a seat so he could always follow her. The only thing I don't understand, well, one of the other things I don't understand, when they finally get the iPad, it's at like three percent, which means he wouldn't be able to follow her much longer after that. But um, I'm I'm gonna. Stop right there, so because I don't want to tell you too much more what goes on. But let's say it's it's an hour and a half. I would say more like an hour and ten minutes of it being pretty intense. You know, especially uh, one of the things I do like is when they have the final fight and all that shit's going down. And the the kid put up a fight, like he started hitting with a golf club, and I'm like, oh shit, you know, he's he's trying to uh, go for a hole in one. But when he starts actually fighting the kid, and he Punches the kid right in the face. I'm like, damn. This movie, that is what I do like. The movie did, doesn't hold too many uh, punches when it comes to the violence. Because I'm not saying like 
how he did it is realistic, but somebody having road rage, I can see, you know, because you hear about people, you know, with uh, pulling guns out and shooting the person because they get pissed off. It's pretty realistic to me in uh, that aspect. Um, but my review. I would say out of, for um, entertainment, I'd give it a 4 out of 5. It was pretty entertaining. Uh, it's a fifth genre, you know, suspenseful. I'd say another 4 out of 5. Now, longevity, this is where I feel like it is going to lack altogether. Because to some people, it's just going to be another throwaway. Unless you're a big fan of Joy Ride and The Hitcher, then you probably would watch it. I'll watch it if it comes on TV or I'll buy it on DVD. Maybe not when it comes right out, right out like 15, 20 bucks. But I would spend like, hmm, 7, 50, 10 bucks on it. It ain't bad, but longevity, I. 2.75 but all together out of 10 I would I would rate it like a 6.5 6.5 maybe 7 because of if, if I have in my mind what's all going on now in 20 years if everything's all right probably wouldn't be a 7 probably be at 6.5 but I thoroughly enjoyed the movie I'm sitting there with my dad and I'm like oh shit you know when some of the some of the shit's going on but 6.5 7 out of 10 Definitely worth seeing, uh, unless you're uh, uh, um, somebody who doesn't like violence. Then obviously, you know why you watch my fucking channel, anyways. Um, but I'm just glad that I finally went to go see another movie. You know, it's about time. I, you know, you gotta wear your face mask and all of that. And I finally got my mask in my Punisher slash KC Chiefs because you know KC's my team. Uh, But, um, definitely, you know, I, I would recommend going to see it. Um, my next movie review would be The New Mutants. I'll have it out by next, the next, the following Friday, because I'm going to go see it, I think, at like 6 o'clock six on Thursday. And then, I have an early release pass to go see Tenet before it comes out. So that review is going to come out like a week or two before anybody else goes and sees it kind of thing unless you're one of the people who you know go has an early pass too um but after that i don't know it's too much of the movies coming out after that but we'll see like if i go to the movies and i see because amc is doing like um older movies too like they're about to bring out jurassic park which i really want to go see that on the big screen um Back to the Future, you know, shit like that. I might review, but I don't know. It all depends on if I can get my um, my other character. And I'm gonna try to film an opening for that. I haven't decided. I have an idea of how I want to do it, but I haven't decided what I'm gonna do about it. You know, like how how like I understand the steps I'm gonna do it, but I haven't decided where I'm gonna do it. That's pretty much the, the thing that's holding me. And I'm trying to get uh, look at uh, free downloadable music to have an opening for it. You know, a little creepy. If you've seen The Fiend from um, WWE, it's kind of like Bray Wyatt and then to The Fiend kind of thing. And you'll see what I mean when I get that character in. If Party City fucking finally puts up the costumes, I could probably get this fucking thing going. Anyways, remember... I'm Phil Patricia Collins. This is the Audi Critics. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, let me know, especially when I start doing horror movies, what movies. Remember, oh, also, the horror movies, when I say low budget, is, I mean, $5 million or less. And you might be like, why? $5 million ain't really, uh, it's quite a bit. Not really, because if you, if you, if I do a movie from the 70s or 80s, and you, you add um, how much money was back then compared to now, it could be $5 million, you know. So, I was like, $5 million, and plus I, it gets me to do a whole bunch of the uh, Blumhouse movies, because that's usually like the budget for Blumhouse. So I get a whole bunch of those to review too. Anyways, like I said, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. This is the Audio Critics, and I'm glad to be following doing some more fucking reviews. I hope you are too, and...
like I say, stay classy.